Well, have you heard that December may be starting out a lot colder than maybe it was looking like a couple of weeks ago? In the video today, we're going to talk about what's going on in the Arctic, why I think that may be what we're seeing. Plus, we're going to look at the week ahead. We've got a couple of storms moving through the country that could bring some snow, not just to the Great Lakes, but I think we're looking at the potential for some snow into the Northeast and a much colder weather pattern setting up as some cold air moves south heading into the first week of December. And this looks like it could be a persistent pattern. I think we get some warm ups, but it looks like a chilly start to December in the middle and eastern part of the country. Let's be specific here. Thanks for coming by. If you're new to the channel, I'm Travis Roberts. I appreciate you guys who have subscribed. If you're new, if you've never been over here before, I used to be in television. I'm, I was a chief meteorologist, but now we're here on YouTube doing these weather analysis videos. So if you think you'd like that, come back and subscribe. Let's go right to it. I'm not here to waste your time. We're here to talk about the weather. I've been accused of rambling. I don't think that's rambling, right? We're just saying hello. Welcome. All right. Cold air across the Northeast. That moves out and uh, some warmer temperatures on the way here for the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast for Monday and Tuesday. Huge storm system out west that's bringing in that atmospheric river a lot of moisture and another storm that's moving through the central part of the country that could bring some snow some rain into the parts of the great lakes and also into parts of ontario i want to show you why i think things do start to change up first of all let me go back to this map for just a moment we've got our strong polar vortex spinning here it starts to weaken at least the jet does here in the polar region that would allow some cold air to start to spill south. If you look at some of the operational runs of the European, it has the idea of that cold air spilling south once we get around the 30th and the 1st of January. A big ridge here, that's a blocking pattern across Greenland, so that would mean cold air moving south. We've also got a decent ridge up here across Alaska, so things are setting in place. And now you've got what we call almost cross-polar flow here setting up. Not quite exactly, but it's definitely swinging around from Siberia into northern parts of Canada down into the uh, North America, which would mean some cold air. Look at the long-term European weeklies. We're looking at averages here. The, the European weeklies look at 48 day up to 46 days out rather, and they use multiple model runs using slightly different starting conditions and they're called ensembles. And they also take in trends and precipitation trends, all of those things. The idea is to develop potential trends and patterns that are setting up and they're showing a cold pattern as we head into the first week of December. And again, I think that lines up with what I'm seeing. If you look at the one month departures from average, on the weeklies through December. This would be December 1 through December 30th. This isn't what we're looking at on December 30th. The trend that they're identifying is colder than average temperatures across the east, arguably across parts of the west too. Let's take it day by day. Feeling pretty confident about what's going on through the next several days. A decent ridging pattern in the upper levels developing here across the central U.S. So warm temperatures here really from Texas north into Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Across the west, we've got the snow going here and some heavy snow at that too into parts of Saskatchewan, Manitoba moving east. Across the northeast through Sunday, we'll have a few rain and snow showers here left over from our system that's slow to depart. Eventually that will wrap up and then we've got our next round of rain and snow moving into the Pacific Northwest also into the Cascades, down into the Sierra, we're gonna see some heavy snow. A decent snow possible too, up here across the Northern Great Lakes, really from the Arrowhead of Minnesota into Michigan, UP of Michigan that is, and then here into parts of Ontario. We're gonna get into that in just a second, but the heavy snow continues across the West, especially if you are in the Sierra, two, three, four feet of snow possible over the next couple of days. And the heavy snow continues across the Northern Rockies from Montana into Idaho, Wyoming. And there's that snow stretching out across Manitoba and Saskatchewan. That moves east. We're laying that snowpack down. I talked about that in a video yesterday. You got to get the snow across Canada to hold that cold air as it moves south. That provides insulation, if you will, for the cold. Also, it reflects the sunlight. So we're starting to see that happen across Canada. Here's that weak system that moves through the Great Lakes on Monday. That's going to bring some rain showers from the lower peninsula of Michigan down into Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, eventually into parts of western New York and the rest of the northeast as we move into Tuesday. Cold enough for some snow maybe in the northern parts of the lower peninsula of Michigan as things wrap up and maybe some lake enhanced or lake effect snow showers, maybe even some rain showers as our system moves by and winds spin out of the northwest. As far as snow totals go, 
Not a lot. A couple of inches possible here from northern parts of Wisconsin into the arrowhead of Minnesota, the UP of Michigan. And there may be a little bit of lake effect coming here off of Lake Michigan for the uh, for the lower peninsula of Michigan. A lot of the snow here into West Virginia and the northeast is falling right now, but up into Ontario, not Toronto. North of that, we'll see some snow accumulate just south of the Hudson Bay. That looks to be the heaviest spot for snow. Once that system moves through, it's going to set the stage for what is to come heading into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Temperatures dropping behind our system into the 20s and 30s, so a cold Tuesday across the Great Lakes into the Northeast. There's that cold. You can see it pushing south, right? There it is. That sets up what we call a baroclinic zone. Really, it's a temperature gradient with baroclinicity developing, and that is where you start to see an area of low pressure ride or develop somewhere in this zone, and that is exactly what the models are picking up on. So let's talk about our storm that's moving through the West. That will be our Thanksgiving period storm. It's going to bring some snow first off to the Rockies. I don't know that we get snow in Denver, but maybe if you're to believe this, as low pressure starts to develop on the lee side of the Rockies, some upslope flow here that would put snow here into the mountains, maybe even into the Denver Metro. And then as this moves off to the east, we start to see return flow out of the south that brings some moisture north, low pressure moving across Texas, starting to deepen. Does that put some snow into Kansas? Does it start to put some snow here on the north side of it into Illinois and Missouri? I think it's going to be a little bit too warm for that. And then as we head toward Thursday and Friday, at least in this area, we start to, to dry out. High pressure builds in, and that's going to push some cold air all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Much colder for the upcoming weekend. That would put temperatures very chilly across the Gulf Coast with some lake effect snow showers starting to pick up. Wednesday is a big travel day. High pressure will be in place as we move into early Wednesday morning. A few snow showers possible into the northeast, but this is where things get complicated. Wednesday afternoon into Thursday. Low pressure moving toward Arkansas on the north side of that. Is it going to be cold enough for some snow? The Saturday midday run of the GFS says yes, it will be. However, I want to go back to last night's run and I want to show you what it showed a different story, really nothing up in this area, and it tries to keep the snow confined here to the south. So today's GFS is a little bit further to the north, right? Putting that snow into Ohio, also into Pennsylvania, moving it into the northeast. It keeps it out of the cities here. It keeps it out of southern Connecticut, but maybe northern Connecticut and get north of that into western Mass. Boston, I think it's rain here, too warm, but interior areas may see a decent dump of snow with this if this low does indeed deepen and ride up the east coast. If it can move away fast enough, we could end up some snow here into places like Hartford, Providence. You know, it's going to be so borderline. But once that moves through, the idea is that northwest flow continues and it turns cold. And just for comparison, in the east, here's the European run from last night. It also has the idea of some rain and snow mix here across Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio. It is putting that heavier band of snow from Indianapolis, some would argue over toward Columbus, maybe north toward Akron, and then across central Pennsylvania. Do I believe this several days out? I don't know that I do, but can you see the argument that things are starting to line up? The GFS and the European catching on to the idea that this snow will stretch somewhere here like this. A long time to go before we narrow this down exactly, but once that moves through, your cold air kicks in out of the northwest and temperatures drop. So this could be an impactful storm for some areas. We've got another area of snow back here across parts of Montana dropping south. Not a lot with that. And then maybe a disturbance moving into Southern California in the four corners that could bring some more rain and snow. But this is a cold pattern setting up as high pressure builds in dropping the temperatures in the east, pulling down that cold air. Now you're bringing snow off of the Great Lakes with, I think, a prolonged period of lake effect snow with a decent storm wrapping up across the northeast. We've got a lot of winds around that, so it would be breezy, windy, cold. It's just going to feel nasty next weekend, if you believe this, and I kind of am leaning this way now. And what happens beyond that? I showed you how we turn cold into December. The overnight European run was trying to go crazy and put some snow here. I'm not trying to give you false hope in Greensboro over to Winston-Salem and, and Raleigh. I think it's too warm in Raleigh or Richmond, but the operational run of the European is trying to keep it cold and snowy with this weather pattern setting up. Do you see a snow? I, I'm not going to say yes with a system that's that far out in time, but your pattern is there. If you're hoping for some snow, maybe that's your hopium for the day. All right. That's all I got for now. Hope you'll come back. See you next time.